Vet du vad du åt senast och hur det påverkar din kropp och hur du mår? Vad vi äter och i vilken ordning påverkar nämligen våra blodsockernivåer mycket mer än vad vi tror. I veckan så pratade jag med Jessie Inchospé. Hon är biokemist och författare med en tydlig mission att översätta viktig forskning till enkla tips som hjälper oss att må bättre både fysiskt och psykiskt. I hennes bok, den här Glukosrevolutionen, så delar hon med sig av de senaste forskningsrönen och berättar också om sin egen hälsoresa. So nice to speak to you. Welcome to TV4, Jesse. Thank you so much for having me. Glucose changed your life and now you're helping the world doing the same. How did your journey start? Tell us. Well, in my early 20s, I started having quite a lot of health problems. So the first thing that happened is that I broke my back in an accident and I had intense surgery, a lot of pain. And then I started developing quite a lot of mental health problems like anxiety, depression, etc. And so at that young age, I became fascinated with health because I was like, I need to figure out how to feel better. You know, I felt very broken physically and mentally. So that took me on a very interesting journey. I first studied biochemistry in grad school in Washington, DC. And then I worked in genetics for five years in Silicon Valley. And nothing really helped me until I finally discovered the world of glucose. And I realized that the way I was eating was actually making me feel worse and was making my mental health worse. And uh, it all became very clear that the science of glucose and how to eat to avoid glucose spikes was going to heal me. And so that's what I did. And then um, I really wanted to share everything I had learned with the rest of the world. Because you really call it a revolution. How does glucose affect our bodies and health? So if you have glucose spikes on a daily basis, like most of us do, then you're going to feel all these symptoms like being tired all the time, having cravings, just feeling like not super good, maybe brain fog. You might get symptoms like having some acne, poor sleep, difficult menopause symptoms. And so in the book, the reason I called it a glucose revolution is that I teach very simple, effortless food hacks to manage your glucose levels while still eating everything you love. When I think about uh, glucose, Jesse, um, I think about blood sugar and diabetes, but this is important for everyone, isn't it? Absolutely. So for a very long time, everybody believed that glucose only mattered once you had type 2 diabetes or if you had type 1 diabetes. And this was accepted, you know, in the medical and the scientific community. But recently, in the past five years, we actually discovered in the scientific community that even if you don't have diabetes, you can still be experiencing these glucose spikes on a daily basis. These glucose spikes, we should try to avoid them first so that we prevent even di type 2 diabetes happening for us. And second, because of all of the symptoms that are connected to these spikes, from cravings to fatigue to constantly being hungry. So when we learn to flatten our glucose curves, like I talk about in my book, we're able to help ourselves today have more energy, have clearer mind, just have a better time. And also we're able to help our health long term by preventing the onset of diabetes. Glucose spikes often come from cravings, of course, and uh, the need of sweets. It's really hard to control. But just explain why glucose spikes are so harmful. So there's three main biological processes that happen in our body when we experience a glucose spike. The first one is that glucose spikes hurt our mitochondria. And the mitochondria in our cells are the little factories responsible for making energy. And so with every glucose spike, we make that mito those mitochondria a bit stressed out and a bit tired. And so over time, the more glucose spikes we have in our diet, the less able to make energy these mitochondria will be. So you might feel some things like chronic fatigue. When these mitochondria get stressed out, they also produce inflammation in the body. And you know, inflammation is a key driver of so many chronic health conditions. Second thing that happens in our body when we experience a glucose spike is a process called glycation. So glycation, it's quite funny. It's a little bit like cooking. From the moment a human being is born, you slowly start to cook through this process of glycation. And then when you're fully cooked, 
you die. I know it sounds weird, but it's true. Glycation is a process that happens in your body. And it's the same process as when you put a chicken in the oven and it goes from pink to brown. That's <laughs> happening in your body every day. And that's the process of aging. So we can't do anything about aging. It's just a normal part of life. But we can actually influence how quickly or how slowly it happens. And when we reduce our glucose spikes, we slow down how quickly aging happens. So that's pretty cool. And then the third main thing that happens in our body when we experience a glucose spike is that our body sends out a hormone called insulin to protect us, to take all this extra glucose and store it away so it doesn't create too much damage. And insulin stores glucose away in our liver, in our muscles, and in our fat cells. So that's one of the ways that we gain fat on our body. It's by our body trying to protect us against glucose spikes. And so all these three processes, when you add them up, depending on you, your body, your medical history, you know, who you are, they might lead to very different symptoms. So in one person, it might be being hungry every 90 minutes and having bad acne. In another person, it could be chronic fatigue and fertility problems. In another person, it can be a quick development of type 2 diabetes. Mm -hmm. Basically, what you need to know is that reducing your glucose spikes is going to help your health significantly. So it's all about flatten the curve again. <laughs> yes, again. I know, I know. Somehow, you know, it was a catchy sentence. I think uh, it's going to keep coming back. Yeah, so take us through the hacks, Jesse, because they are really, really important here. Absolutely. Okay, so in the book, in order, we have number one, eat your food in the right order, which means start your meal with the vegetables and finish your meal with the things that contain glucose. So with starches and sugars. Uh, that's kind of a very core important concept to balance your glucose levels. Veggies first, and then starches and sugars last. Then another hack is to add a vegetable starter to the beginning of your meals, like I explained previously. This is really important as well, and it can make a very big difference, especially if your meal does not contain vegetables. Then we move on to breakfast. So this is a very important one. I mean, they're all important, but what you have for breakfast is going to define and dictate what the rest of your day's glucose curve will look like. It's very important to have a breakfast that is full of protein and not too much sugar so that you set yourself up for the day on a nice curve, steady glucose, steady energy, no cravings. And then we move on to vinegar, as I explained. So one tablespoon of vinegar before a meal. You can either use it as a dressing or you can drink it in a big glass of water. This has a lot of impact. Walking after eating uh, or doing any sort of light movement. That's really key. Uh, putting clothes on your carbs. Again, so that means when you're having starches or sugars on their own, try to add some protein, fat, or fiber to them to reduce the spike. So for example, if you're having a fika, so if you're having like a piece of cake, Try to add some almonds to it or maybe have a little plain yogurt before it that'll help reduce the spike. Or if you're having a piece of bread or a plate of pasta, try adding maybe, you know, some spinach to that, maybe a slice of ham. Just try adding some protein, fat and fiber to reduce the spike of that carb. Are your hacks for everyone, Jesse? For instance, if you have a disease or illness? Well, always check with your doctor. Always, always. I'm not a doctor, so, you know, I share the latest scientific studies. What I found by speaking to doctors is that generally these hacks are completely harmless. And for most people, they're completely fine to use. So at last, Yassi, for some inspiration, if you compare how you feel today with how you felt in the beginning of your journey. <sighs> oh, wow. You know, it's wild because at the beginning of my journey, my body really felt like 
like a black box. My body really felt like something I did not understand. I felt tired. My mental health was like really not good. My hormones were out of whack. And I felt like my body was fighting me. I was like, why is my body doing this? You know, I felt like quite angry, quite lost. And then slowly I realized, oh, wait a second. These symptoms that I'm feeling are actually my body speaking to me and saying, Jesse, hello, there's a problem happening within, there's glucose spikes, you need to fix it. And so not only do I now feel so much better mentally, physically, but also now I've changed my relationship with my body. And instead of feeling like my body was a black box that I was angry against, I now feel like my body is my partner and that we're friends and that I take care of it and that I balance, you know, eating foods that give me pleasure, but also supporting my body's health. So it's, it's honestly a whole new experience of life for me. It's amazing. And you only have one body. So exactly. Thank you so much, Jesse. Thank you for the inspiration. Thank you for having me.